Good morning, Coach. Doug Feinberg, the AP. I'm curious, how much at this time of the year do you try to fix things from yesterday that didn't go well versus, okay, that's done, let's focus on the next game, so to speak? Um, if there's some similarities, we try to fix it. There's some similarities in um, how our fours have to defend um, the three-pointer, the three-point uh, line. Um, but, you know, at this point, it's about just being able to play to the habits that you've created all season long. And when they go A-wire, you're, you're just trying to, in real time, make adjustments. And, and that's what it's about at, at, at this stage of the game. So not a whole lot of screaming or yelling, just kind of showing them what what we need to do. Um, I think I think they know. I think they're, this moment will allow them to um, just rely on those habits. Thank you so much. Um, Coach Saley, Judy Gatson from WIS-TV in Columbia. I actually have a question for you from one of the fans, Forrest Alton, who says you have five new starters, a rebuilding year according to some. Nobody could have predicted you would have been undefeated in the Elite Eight, but here we are. Including when, me. <laughs> when did you know that this team was special? Is there a particular game or moment that you remember? Um. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't allow this team to take me to categories because I just stay in real time with them. Um, because if you categorize them, it's hard. I mean, it's hard. They're, I, I would say their competitiveness in practice is what really um, allowed me to go to a place where I knew that if that they don't like to lose, and I, I have to credit our our male practice squad, the highlighters. Like the highlighters are really, really, really good. And although um, a lot of times they they beat us in practice, a lot of times they beat us. Um, so it, it makes it easier when we're able to just just come out and, and play our, our competition because the highlight is no matter no matter what the speed of our opponents are um, they're much quicker they they do it at a much faster pace so they've allowed us to kind of see the game a little slower if if teams aren't as quick as our highlighters so it's more about practice and preparation um, and obviously we're getting the results from that preparation Uh, Coach Peyton, Sa Peyton Titus from the State Newspaper. Uh, you talked yesterday about seeing in Raven's eyes that she wasn't going to let y'all lose that game. And there have been other players, too, who had clutch moments like Bree and Camilla in close games. Does this team seem to have kind of a clutch gene, or do you think that sells the preparation short? Um, I, I think it's, um, it's the competitive piece. Um, like, they, they don't want to lose. And they have an uncanny way of figuring it out um, player by player like you and they don't they're not phased by losing a 22 point lead um, or going down double digits they're not phased by it um, it's, it's unbelievable to, to see how they handle adverse situations all season long so it's more about the character of this team than than you know just pointing out a, a player having a good game and um, meeting the moment. So it's, it's, it's been a little bit of everybody. So it's the fabric of what they've created. Uh, David Glodiger, Post and Courier. Uh, Dawn, you, you've had Malaysia now for close to a full year. How do you like her ability to bounce back after maybe her not usual uh, performance? Because you know, yesterday didn't, didn't go so well. Just how have you seen her respond from bad games previously? Yeah, she, she was due, though. She was due because she's, she's been playing at a really high level. And you know, people they scheme, um, and I, I I do think Lay Lay makes bad shots. <laughs> so when you when you make bad shots, you know you create this. You create like I can I can take and make any shot, and sometimes when her bad shots don't go in, um, it creates a disadvantage on the other end. Um, but we live with it. 
I mean, she's hit so many bad shots and she's actually opened the game up for us. So we'll, we have to take those hits. Um, she'll have to learn. Um, but her, her bounce back game is, 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 is pretty incredible. So I'm looking forward to see how she um, comes out against Oregon State. She was really, she was great in practice. I think she's got that, you know, that spark in her eye, knowing that she wants to come out and play well. Hey, Dawn, good morning. Howard McDowell at the next. Um, during the SEC tournament, <clears throat> there were a lot of uh, questions uh, celebrating you guys, and you talked about, you know, gee, 50-50 games, they're not always going to go our way. And yesterday, we were asking a lot of questions, talking about big moments your players came through, and you said, you know, oh, we blew a 20-point lead. And I, I use that as preface to say, is that a message for your team? Is that a message that you're uh, trying to communicate? Or is there just like legitimate things you are worried about, uh, even during the team, you know, during the season where you've been undefeated and better than you were last year? Yeah, I'm worried every day, every day, every single day. I mean, they're they're still very young, and they've they've had young moments, they've had mature moments, um, they've had you know questionable moments. Um, but but we sit here where we are, um, and I I don't lose sight of not giving them the credit that they deserve being in this place. There, we're a really good basketball team that that can have some moments. Um, so it, it's more for them, it's more for everybody to to understand that that we're young. And I, I don't, Indiana's a seasoned basketball team. Like, like I was afraid of the experience that we're, they were bringing into the game. Um, we were fortunate enough to just, you know, get out to a big lead and, and a cushion, so to speak, but Again, our, our team sometimes, when we have a, a cushion like that, we could take it to another level. We can open it up to 30 and 40, um, or we can lose it and, and take it down to 10 or, or lose the lead. And um, but they're again, they're never phased by it. But uh, we 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 call it this. We, we I mean, even our coaches were like, you, "Are you drinking the Kool Aid?" And a lot of times we're saying we're sipping, but we're not going to take a full gulp. <laughs> As to how good this team is. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Don, Raven talked yesterday about not, not wanting to lose, not wanting to be, you know, anyone be able to sag off like they did last year. How has her game and her mindset changed last year? And is there any one point that you can pinpoint where you saw a change or where you saw that she had that she'd really kind of, you know, changed her, her mindset? Well, I, I think with Raven, it's, it's more of um, she's outwardly saying it. And she's not one that outwardly speaks about things like that. So obviously it, it hurt her. There, there's pain behind um, what she's saying, but um, she replaced it with work ethic and getting in the gym and, trying to dispel that because it I mean it was it was an embarrassing moment for her. um and all of social media and they're young they're into social media um so it was an embarrassing moment but again she was 50 percent from the floor she was three for six in the game so um I just want her to replace all of that with your 50 percent from three um if you can be 50% from three, you're going to increase our chances of winning basketball games. So I think she's just growing up and maturing and, and finding her voice through an adverse situation. Hey, Coach Brett Taylor with KZ9 Sports in the back. This will be the third time you guys have faced Oregon State in the March Madness tournament. Coach Rue kind of joked about it. Every time it seems like they make it to the tournament, they seem to face you guys. What's it like facing an Oregon State squad led by Coach Rue? And what do you recall from the first two meetings in the March Madness tournament that you might take into this game tomorrow? Um, well coached, real um, calculating and disciplined to plan the style of play that they want. Real, just discipline. Um, I mean, they they slow the game down at a at a at a pace that if you're, if you don't stay engaged, they're going to make you pay. Um, they're they're pretty stingy when it comes to defending. Um, so you 
you have to be really disciplined. Like you gotta out discipline them in, on both sides of the basketball to win to win the bat to win this this game. And for the most part, in playing them, I I thought we we did a pretty good job with disrupting, and we're gonna have to do a really good job disrupting um, as well. So I don't I think we played them in 21 and then 18 2018 if I'm not mistaken. 142? Yeah. So thanks Dave. It's our local media they they keep me right. <laughs> Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic in the Middle. Um, Don, there was obviously a big storyline in the game before yours yesterday involving a nose ring. I was wondering mm -hmm. if you were told at any point uh, yesterday about the players on your team not wearing jewelry or you know, were you alerted to anything? No, wasn't alerted to anything, but obviously our players are into social media. They saw uh, what took place. You know, it's, a, it's strange because as much as you know, during practice, you know, we were in the beginning of in the beginning of the season, we were on, you know, piercings alert. Hey, take that out. Hey, take that out. Take that out. Take that out. Don't come in here with that. Don't come in the weight room with that. I mean, I don't have any more stamina to fight that. I don't. Um, and I guess the NCAA didn't have stamina to do it during the regular season, so they got they got enough to do it now. So. You know, you got to adhere to, to the rules of of real time. And if it cramps the player's style, um, you shouldn't have been wearing them in, in the first place. So I don't know. I just I – don't, I don't want any distractions for our team. I want our team to be able to just um, ride the wave that they're on if you're, you're dealt with a little bit of adversity and taking out one of your piercings. Just do it. Keep the main thing the main thing. Hey, Coach Daly, Erica Ayala with CBS Sports. Um, I want to go back to the Kool-Aid. You said y'all are sipping the Kool-Aid, not, not gulping it down. When it comes to you and the coaching staff, especially late in games, what is that balancing act of being able to give directive as a coaching staff versus making sure to keep that confidence in your team so that they can execute on the floor? Well, I mean, we we have a we have a, a coaching staff full of, you know, different emotional types. <laughs> um, I mean, Jolette's kind of calm and cool. Um, Mary is uh, um, just calm, just thoughtful. Um, Khadija is wild like she's she's our, our young our, our youthful energy um coach boyer is <laughs> coach boyer is i mean she's got stamina to talk about basketball and what's happening every single pass not possession a pass if it's not perfected in the way that her vision sees it we hear about it like and it's almost too much um and then i'm you know I, I just i think i meet the moment whatever the moment demands um i'm gonna i'm gonna be there so i think it's a little bit of all of us but our players have really embraced all of our personalities to the point where they know it's coming from a place of wanting us to be successful so they don't really take us um as it's not stabbing their confidence. It's more of lifting them up and making sure that they're um, adhering to the habits that we're preaching. Yes, and then we have the last one up here. Go ahead. How you doing, Coach? Sheree Nicole, Essence Magazine. Um, you guys obviously have had a phenomenal year, and I really love the balanced attack that you've had on the offensive and the defensive end, and also just the point spread. Um, thinking about this team being young and also thinking about in this tournament, every game's a new game. Um, for you, without diving too much into your playbook and giving it away, is there one facet of this team's collectiveness um, and ability that you are still waiting to see, that if you are able to see it in this tourney, will change the game for you guys? If we could put four quarters together. I, I think we'd be a, an incredible team to, um, to play against. Um, I mean, we, we, we haven't done it yet. I mean, we put 
a great half together. We put th three great quarters together. Um, but it's a testament to the talent. Like there are talented teams in our sport and there aren't very many, very many teams that can play four quarters of perfect basketball. And that's, that's what we preach as coaches. That's what we want. We don't want a letdown. Knowing that you're going to have a letdown, it just can't be as big as um, it will put you in the position of losing the basketball game. So, um, so it, it's just that part of it, our, our ability to continue to move the ball offensively and find who should shoot, shoot it, and then to be lock and step and linked up defensively where we're communicating, we're flying all over the place, but it's, it's, a, you know, it's an, a disciplined, ex, you know, um, execution of our game plan. Last one right here. Um, Michael Vopel, ESPN.com. Coach, you've played with and coached a lot of very passionate post players. The nature of that game, very physical, and, and it can get really emotional. How have you sort of worked with Camilla in terms of you want that passion, but, but not letting it be a detriment at all to her? Hmm. Um, I, I, I want, I want more passionate Camilla. Like, I mean, yesterday I thought, I thought she, she put it all together on both sides of the basketball. I thought she was, um, calculating. I thought she was determined. I thought she, she had a, we're not losing the day mentality. Um, she's not always been that. Like she's been smiling, Camilla. She's been um, just kind of happy-go-lucky. Um, I want her to flip it. I want her to be. I want her to be like Killer Miller. Like I, I do. I want her to be that, and she was that for us. So I, I mean, Camilla's growing and maturing and trying to figure things out. Trying to see if if these are her last college days, um, you know, whether she's gonna take the step and go to the other side of, of playing professional basketball. Like they all, all of our players that are, are fortunate enough to be in that deci decision-making phase, um, it, it plays on you, it, it plays on you. It really, it really does. And there's, they all go through it. One step in, one step out. And I, I, I think she's, I think she's enjoying this team, like really, really enjoying this team um, so much that I think it's her last days, I think. Um, but she's enjoying it so much that she probably doesn't want to let go because she's having so much fun um, with this team. So whatever she decides, we're going to be, um, we're, I'm going to be happy for her because I know she's going to be a top pick. Um, I know that her days, her, her better days are ahead of her. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Coach. Thanks Thank you. for the time. Thank you.